Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Google released Android P Beta 1. This is available to developers. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out if you have a compatible device. It's not just Pixels and Nexus devices this time. This time around, it's some other devices as well. Devices from Nokia, Xiaomi, and others. So you may be able to try it out, but it is a beta, so beware of that, that it may have some issues. So far, it's been stable. I've been using it all day, trying to take a look at how it works. And one of the major things they've announced is that it has an AI and machine learning component that's built into the whole thing and they've redesigned the overall ui or user interface so the first thing if we pull down here you'll see at the top it says the date and time and it's black across the top now if i change the wallpaper in the background you'll see the ui is different here too maybe i'll change the wallpaper to something a little bit brighter change it to this one for now just to give you an idea of what it's doing so now everything's brighter if i pull down it's white so it adapts to whatever the background is. We'll change it back here. Now that this is changed back, you'll see it's black again. It just changed as I was pulling down and some of the notification information is different. We can now act on these a little bit different. We can manage notifications down at the bottom. If we go to manage, we can show all the most recent ones. We can turn them off. It's very simple and straightforward. So if I want to turn that one off, maybe I want to turn off any of these. I can do that and it's very straightforward. I can swipe them away, I can tap and push on them, stop notifications, keep showing, and it's just a really clean look to it. Let's clear all of these for now. And they've changed the settings as well. So if I pull down again, we've got some settings here built in. We'll go into settings and now everything's colorful and it's a little bit different. And you'll see it says turn on sound because I set it to vibrate. Now we can do that right here or I can push the volume button and you'll see the UI has changed here as well. So if I push that again, we've got the vibrate button here. It's very quick and simple. And then if I hit the settings button, we can go right to all of our different settings. So it's much nicer as far as configuring volume. And that's one thing I wasn't a big fan of on Android that they seemingly fixed here. Now the next thing has to do with some of their AI and that has to do with battery. And a lot of people complain about battery and want their battery to be better. And while it's pretty good on a Pixel 2 and 2XL, this should help a lot. It has something called adaptive battery. An adaptive battery, you can see right here, it's turned on. It says to extend battery life, adaptive battery limits battery for infrequently used apps. Your phone will learn how you use apps over time. Notifications may be delayed for these apps. So this is something that's new and is using AI and machine learning to figure out the best way to preserve battery for you. Now they do this with brightness as well. So they have adaptive screen brightness. So we'll just go to brightness since I'm not sure where they put it. So you'll see adaptive brightness does the same thing. So your screen will, your screen brightness will automatically adjust to your environment and activities. So you can move the slider to help, but it also learns your preferences. So maybe in one app, you want it a little bit darker and another it's brighter. And if you noticed, I tapped the home button to go home, but there's no back or app switcher button. So this is a little bit different and gesture based. So if I tap it again, it does nothing. If I double tap again, there's not a whole lot there, but if I swipe up, we've got cards now, and this is very similar to iOS or really web OS. And if we slide here, we can act on them. We can select right from within here as well. So we could search right within just by tapping and holding, select what you want, copy it. And it's really easy to use. Now, if I wanted to use split screen, I can tap this icon here, get app info, use split screen, or if I don't want to use it anymore, I can swipe it away. Now I haven't found an option to clear them all at once so far, but maybe they'll add that later on. Now, if I tap again, you see it goes away. If I slide this to the right, I can slide back and forth. Let's try that again. If I swipe this to the right, I'm not doing it fast enough. You can see if I swipe, there we go. We can move through apps and you've got a little bit of haptic feedback that it's shattering the phone or moving the phone a little bit. So I know which app I'm on and I can do it that way, but it's just as easy to swipe up a little bit and swipe this way. Now, if I swipe up fast, I get my app drawer. And if I tap, I go home. If I swipe up a little bit and swipe up again, I can get my app drawer. So you can do it multiple ways. Now, one of the things they have that's new is called app actions and it uses machine learning to put relevant information in front of you. So here you can see it says assistant. And then I have one other, it's a contact and it puts it there thinking that I might want to use it. And if I do, I can act on it or save it.
So I can tap on hold it and save it to my home screen. Of course, I can just use assistant that way. And that part of the UI is the same. Now, if we long press this, we get Android assistant. If we half swipe up, you saw that slide to the right. And then there is a back button when you need it. So maybe you're in an application, we go into Google Chrome. Now the back button is there, but it's not there unless it needs it. Now you can bring that UI information back up and have the back and app switcher. It's a little bit hard to get used to. It's been taking me a little bit of time, but I'm starting to get used to it and I do really like it. Now, one thing they've added is smart reply for applications. So if I swipe down, I can reply to a tweet right here. So I talked about these new, these new swipe gestures and I can say whatever I want right here and just smart reply right from the drop down drawer, the notification drawer. One of the new features has to do with do not disturb. So if we swipe down, we can turn that on, but there's a new feature that you can just turn your phone over, put it down, and now it goes into do not disturb. It knows that you don't wanna be disturbed unless it's someone that you deem important enough to come through your notifications. That's something they added I think is really helpful. Now there's a whole new thing called digital well-being. Now I don't have this dashboard yet and I wasn't able to find it, but digital well-being gives you information about how long you're using applications and how long maybe you use Twitter or you used YouTube and it'll show you per day and over time. It's a ton of data and it will help you out quite a bit just to kind of get an idea of what you're doing to maybe try and bring that back a little bit or keep it under control. Now there's also a part of that that's called wind down. So maybe you want to set a bedtime every night. You want to go to bed at say 10, 11, whatever time you go to bed, it will start to turn the screen grayscale or remove all color right before you're starting to go to bed. So that it kind of discourages you from using it and you'll want to put it down. I haven't used this. I haven't found it in here yet to try out, but it is something that's built in. Now, along with all of the different battery features, there's something called background restrictions where it restricts all of the background applications running so that no longer is it controlled by the application, it's controlled by the overall OS and will stop these from doing anything in the background and really save you battery. So I'll be curious to see how this does over a few days. Now, there's also a few things in the background you're not going to see, such as built-in audio quality enhancements to use across different applications. So there's some standardization. There's also standardization along with your biometric fingerprint sensor. So maybe you're using that to unlock your phone, but you want it standardized across the, the user interface. So maybe you're in an application and you don't want it to use whatever fingerprint it's doing for that. And they don't have to build that. It's built into the OS itself. Now there will be updates to things such as photos with the lens and all sorts of little enhancements. And we'll probably see quite a few over time. I really like the volume adjustment as simple as that is. I like how they've done that. And so far I'm really enjoying the experience. This swipe gesture is a little bit difficult to get used to. And you can see there's some apps down here as well. So they appear, they're my most used apps based on what I'm using the most, and it's using AI to determine that and put it there. And it seems to work really well. So I'll continue to use this and see what kind of other features I can find, if there's anything major, and hopefully we'll see some different changes before it comes out later this year. Let me know if you've found anything though in the comments below. I'll be sure to leave this wallpaper linked in the description below as well. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.